Hi everyone, here we are back at Upholstery on Broadway. Today I'm going to be showing you how to repair or restyle a dining room chair. This comes to me from a designer and what she's requesting that I do, these are brand new dining room chairs and they're beautifully done. Um, what she's requesting is that we change the outside back, which is a little trickier than, than it sounds. Uh, so we're going to be removing the inside back to get to the outside back and we're going, to do, we're going to do this in a different fabric. Now we're going to, not going to be doing that today, but we're just going to show, demonstrate how to take this apart today, which can be tricky because we need to save the fabric on the front. So here we are, we have to take the double piping off first. And it's always a mystery uh, how manufacturers put this on. I mean, it may be stapled on, believe it or not, through the, through the two weldings, or glued, I hope because um, gluing sometimes is the easier way unless it's an industrial glue of some sort and then that can be a problem but we won't know until we start to attempt to do this so uh, here's where it's pieced over here so I'm gonna use a chisel just gently to try to bring one of these ends up and so far oh okay that came up I'm happy about that but <laughs> I feel a staple in there and I also feel a little glue. So we have both, I believe. Let's just see. No, we just have glue and that's good. So you ideally would like to pull this off very gently with your fingers and not use any of the harsh tools. Again, we have to reuse this. I have to re-glue this on after I upholster this front. So here we go. Let's hope that I can take this whole double piping off without ripping it. And like I said, if I rip it, I'm in trouble because this is a matching set of eight. So if one get, I have to do all eight. If one of these gets ripped, there's no fabric. So I guess we have to be careful. So I'm just gently, I don't know if you can see this, but I have my thumb. Um, I'm only, I'm preserving the, the, the inside back fabric also. I have to preserve the double piping and the fabric. So I have to be aware of both of these ripping. So um, I'm just gently, I, I, one index finger could come over here just to hold the inside back fabric down. So this is also fraying on me, so you have to be careful. So far it's okay. I have about a half of an inch on my inside back to work with all the way around. So um, I can afford to fr have this uh, fray a little bit, but not extend the fray. Okay, if I'm extended a half of an inch, I'm in trouble. So you'll find two fabric will tear one way easier than the other way, so you have to be aware of that. Just take it slow. This, so, so now I'm coming up this, this length here, it's probably going to come off easy, I suspect, because it's a different cut on the fabric. Watch this. Yeah, you see that? That's just coming, but you still have to be careful. You really need to concentrate on this, really focus, take your time. Some parts are harder than others because there's more glue. I guess slow and steady is the best way. Now I have a real stubborn piece here. I probably need my chisel just to try to get underneath that carefully. So, Some people take glue guns and they heat it. I hit heat the glue. I would recommend against that unless you absolutely have to do that. Um, I don't like that because a lot of times you get glue on the fabric uh, where you don't want it. Um, so, or or the, sometimes the glue gun is dirty uh, at the head and, and, you, and you slip and you get your nice fabric, that's also a problem. Now I have a problem area here too, I have a lot of resistance here so I'm wondering if it's not stapled. So I'm going to take my chisel again and very gently kind of coax that up. Yeah, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is leave that. I'm gonna come this way to see, hopefully I can take this off all the way to here and then maybe it'll peel better this way. So that's also another strategy. You don't have to keep on going, you can come back. Okay, something I don't like what they did here is that they cut they cut their double piping, they didn't fold it. So that just makes my job harder. So normally on a double piping you want to extend extend uh, the double piping, cut it here, take the material, the, the innards out, and then fold it under to get a cleaner cut than this, but they didn't do that. 
So I'm, I'm faced with being extra careful on the end here. Now they, they didn't do it on this end either, so be careful. They're not making it easy. The manufacturer is not making it easy for me. So what I will do, I'll take this double piping and I'll stretch it. Just to, uh, I may be able to put that desired, um, you know, fold under and glued under if I stretch the double piping. This is really not coming out. So to focus, be a little careful here. Come this way with my chisel to see if I can. Yeah, I coats that. There we go. This should come out as easy as the other side. So when I, when I could pull, it, it could be another reason why I can pull this is that the fact that their glue gun may not have been hot over in this area. I could tell that the glue really didn't set. It's helping me right now, but um, when you glue, that's, you know, for a tip, you need to make sure that your glue gun is hot. You have two settings on your glue gun, a low and a high on a really good glue gun will have two settings. That's an industrial glue, glue gun always high setting. Um, some of these glue guns that you'll buy out on the market are no good because they don't get the glue hot enough. And when a glue isn't hot enough, it, won't, it will not adhere to the back of the fabric. So make sure you get an industrial gun on high. And of course, the flip side to having it really glue well on the chair is that if you get this on your finger, it's gonna burn. So always have a piece of muslin cloth ready or you know, you're wearing your work pants, make sure that if you do get glue on your fingers, take it off. Don't look at it and scream, oh my God, I have glue on my finger. Would you be surprised? People do that. They panic a little bit. Just take it right off because it will burn. Okay, now I'm, I, I've come back up to the top here. Okay, good. I came right around there now and it came, it's coming off for me. Okay. So all this to get back to here where it was really giving me a hard time. And it, and it still doesn't want to come up. Wow. So I'll take my chisel and just work that a little bit, a little leverage. And there we go. Just undid that double piping. Seems like a lot of work, but the designer wants a different fabric on the outside back in order to tie the entire house uh, into, into with color. I can see why she's doing it because when you have these set around the table, and, and um, it really can add um, some unity to the, to, the, to the floor plan when you can uh, take a color, let's say, on the sofa. Uh, we post the sofa in a, in a blue velvet, let's say, and, and she slaps it on the back of these chairs. It ties it, it could tie in the entire downstairs. So now our next stop, next step is to take uh, the inside back off. So. Um, we're not going to get cut any breaks on this one. Uh, this is going to be challenging too because I can see already where you can see how the fabric is fraying and it's really pulled tight, which is another thing. So um, there's a couple of things I could do. I think instead of digging out these staples, I think I'm actually going to try to get my awl underneath here as careful as I can because it's already fraying. Look at that. I mean, I'm not hardly any pressure on this at all and it's coming. It's good in one way it's coming out, but I, it, I'm gonna be challenged putting it back. So it's a staple down there that these staples are in pretty good too. So if I can peel it away at a corner, so that's my strategy, and then get my fingers underneath carefully and pull, look at that. I mean, but folks, this, this is, like I said, it's easy in one way. It's all frayed, the staples are let, uh, and the fabric is pulling away from the staples that are embedded in the wood. My other choice would have been to take every single one of these staples out with the awl, which would have taken a long time. So I have mixed feelings about this though, because I know that when I go to put this fabric on, I'm gonna be challenged. So here we go. Let's see if the whole thing comes off this way. Yeah, look at that. Wouldn't be my first choice of a fabric. Fabric that frays this much. You know, folks, I probably would have, if I were upholstering this, and not to pick on a manufacturer too much, but I, I would, would have taken and folded this under. If I had a fabric that frayed like this, I would have folded it just to close it up. And once you do that, you close it up and the staple goes on. But look at this, this is just fraying. Challenge over that corner, so I have to come back to that. Let's see. May have to take this staple out. Let's see. Take that 
first staple on it, I bet the, the rest of the fabric comes. That stand up and get my side cutters and take it out that staple up the rest of the way. What I did was I they all took it up. So, so now that glue that was put on, it's coming, the whole glue is coming off with the fabric. Isn't that funny? Hasn't done anything. Okay. Get the top. But be careful now. You don't want to. Position is everything, right? So we're gonna do it now. Position this this way. Okay, this is tough. This isn't coming up that great. Easy. There it is. Now, I would say very few fabrics come off this easy. Um, hold on, that, like I said, is another thing. So I just want to make sure that they have their fabric marked before I take it off the chair. Because I could put this in the upside down. And I don't know how they, they knew enough to put all the inside backs one way, but I don't see this marked. So I'm going to take a piece of tape. Before it leaves the chair, I'm going to mark this inside back top. See that? That way there, I know when I go to a pulse of these, I know what the top is. So there we go, there's the inside back. Okay, now, to grab that foam, foam should come out easy. But you don't want to rip it because I have to reuse it. Okay, now this is a surprise. They have a piece of wood in here. A little surprised to see wood rather than burlap and webbing. Um, it's not... I, you know, I, don't, I haven't decided. I may have to use it again because that's what the designer probably wants. It does give the outside back a flat look, I suppose. Um, I don't like it only because if a knee goes into it and breaks it, it's broken. But if a knee goes into webbing and burlap, it just bounces back. That's the big difference. So we're learning a lot with this. So the outside back, we don't have to save uh, the fabric, I mean. So I can be a little rougher with this as long as I'm not in the um, wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get this up in one piece because like I said, I may reluctantly have to use this piece. This, this is tough. Maybe I won't use it because I can't get it off without ripping it. But that's okay. I'll, I'll just upgrade this. It. it would be, so I'm, I'm making a decision right now to tear this off instead of trying to save it because it will take too much time to get all these staples out. That's one reason. The other reason is this, this deserves an upgrade, I suppose, with the, with the webbing and the burlap. Okay, so here I go. Be careful, this stuff is sharp. So there we go. Because I'll just put it over there for now. So here's, here's where we're, 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 we're getting into. We're going to take this off now. And uh, this is what's going to be replaced. So I don't care about this, but she does want me to save this fabric. The designer has plans on using this for something, so I'm going to save this. But I'm going to write on it, outside back. Outside back. Okay, I'll put that over there. So all our components are over there. And the only thing left now is to clean up my staples. So I'll start this, and then we'll talk a little bit more about part two on this video. So my side cutters are fantastic to take out staples that are halfway, in, halfway coming out anyhow. Look at that, isn't that nice? Good pair of side cutters that fit your hand is really advisable. And the ones that don't come out that great, you can take your all if you're careful and just lift, and then use your side cutters. So cleaning up this hole. Look at that. I'm not too unhappy about the way these stables are coming out. It, sometimes you're left here for hours trying to dig these out. These are coming right out for us. That's the way we took it apart. So just want to show you, focus in on this edge right here. So we, I won't bore you with the whole taking all of this out, but I will show you what I just did. 
And I run my finger along to make sure that uh, there are no staple stubs in there. Um, and then I'm going to clean the rest of this up. But let's bring this up. So, so what makes these chairs special is that this outside back is put on first and then the inside back and the double piping in the front and the webbing and the burlap of course in between. But what this recessed look is, is desirable. Um, um, it's more desirable than having the fabric just come here for instance. Well, there we have it. We took the entire inside back, the foam, the piece of wood that was in there, more foam, and the outside back, double piping, took it all off and went down to the frame. And we're awaiting the fabric from the designer. And when that comes in, we're going to upholster this and then put all the other pieces back on the front. Thanks again. Looking forward to part two.